we are running out of HDMI ports so much that we are looking for different switches and devices to help mitigate the one or two HDMI ports we have on a monitor or a TV. Like this gaming monitor back here, it gets 144 refresh rate, which is great. That's what I need. I need FPS for games, but I only have two HDMI ports and a display port. Coincidentally, they're being taken up by a Mac, my gaming PC, and my Switch. But how am I supposed to hook up my Xbox Series X or my PS5 to that? Or even on my big TV in my living room? How am I supposed to hook up any of my gaming consoles and Blu-ray players and stuff like that all at the same time so that way I could just hit a switch and go between them? This video is sponsored by Ori. However, they do have no say and no opinion in any of my comments here today. The opinions are my own. They did provide it to me, but they don't get to see this video before I release it. And in fact, they're actually watching it with you. So if they don't like what I have to say, so first things first, this is an 8K two-in-one switch. This is gonna be a valuable switch for a certain demographic of people. Not every single person is gonna need this. You actually probably can use a cheaper alternative like this. This may be your alternative version. Now this is what I've actually been using for a long time for a lot of my setups. But there's gonna be a couple of case scenarios where using the Ori switch is gonna hail in comparison compared to this. Let's go into some of those scenarios. Before I get into that, actually, I should get into the details about this device. This actually has two HDMI in ports and an HDMI out. But you're gonna notice something different here, which is not included in something like this. It actually has an audio extractor. Now, what in the, does that mean? If you've ever played like a PS4 or an Xbox 360 before, you knew there was a thing called an optic audio out or digital audio out. The idea is you can split your audio track from your HDMI cord and take it to a speaker system or a stereo system in your house. So if you have like a 5.1 surround sound system, you can run that audio directly to the system versus going through your TV and then your TV maybe to that system. Not all audio systems now accept HDMI. So by them including this Optical audio out is huge, or this digital audio out is huge. If you have a DAC for headphones, you could run an optical cable from here into your DAC, or you could run a analog um, stereo cord from here into your speakers. So it does give you a big option of where your audio is coming from. Another detail about this switch is the fact that it does allow all Dolby formats. You can get a full official list here, but for what I use Dolby Vision, it works perfectly fine. And also there's no lag to the video feed. So if you know, if you're a true gamer, lag is bad. Lag gets you killed in Call of Duty. Get down. Get here. Also because it's an 8K switch, it actually can go up to 8K30. So for all my new or current gen console players, that means your 4K 120 refresh rate is nothing but net in this. Damn. You can play your PS5 or your Xbox Series X, no issues. The only caveat, the only caveat is it's not HDCP compliant. So you are gonna run into issues if you are trying to stream and like run Netflix or something like that, it won't work. I went ahead and actually put this through a couple different tests. I have about three case scenarios I wanna go over that are gonna really help you determine if this is something you need. And also one of those scenarios, I wanna talk about some of the problems that I had with it. Let's go. So let's talk case scenario A. We're not doing nothing but HDMI. Nothing exciting, nothing extravagant. We're just, I want two consoles together and I wanna be able to play on those two consoles and switch between the two devices. So in this case, I'm gonna take an Xbox Series X as well as a Nintendo Switch. I'm gonna hook both of them up to the separate HDMI ends and then have the one HDMI out go directly to my TV. Let's talk about who is this good for. If you are a current gen console or you're prepping for future gens, like maybe a PS5 Pro, definitely this is gonna be the switch for you. Because it has the capabilities to handle 8K or up to an 8K signal at 30 frames per second, you're guaranteed at least a good solid run for the next couple of years. And I don't foresee, TVs haven't really evolved into 8K. So I don't foresee a PS5 pushing 8K anytime soon. I think for most of all of our configs, a 4K 120 or 4K 144 is gonna be about as high as we get. And this can handle all that and more. Now, if you are a 
previous gen console, like an like an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, PS4, or even like a Nintendo Switch enthusiast, that's where like a simple switch like this is gonna work. Again, less bang for your buck. I think if you, but if you need that audio extraction, then this is gonna definitely give you what you need versus this. This will not give you any of that. So let's talk scenario B. In this case scenario, we're gonna do something a little bit different. If you were to go to the Ori website, it actually states that it's not compatible with any capture card, especially an Elgato capture card. But the primary reason for this is because it doesn't support HDCP. So knowing that that's a limitation of the device itself and Ori's just kind of representing that, in fact, Elgato has the same thing as well. So technically you could still use this with your capture cards. In fact, scenario B is a really cool scenario. I actually routed this to my 4K X. Yes, my Elgato 4K X. I was able to hook up both systems still to the various ends and I had the out going to my 4K X from Elgato. So I was able to still capture gameplay from my Xbox Series X to my laptop and then have that signal still run in full HDR 4K 120 to my television. I was mind blown in this case scenario because I know the website itself says it's not officially supported. However, because you're not playing a game that's HDCP, then you have no issues. PS5 issues, I do warn there might be an issue with some gameplays if it does require HDCP compliance, but I believe you would also encounter that with your Elgato product. So if I'm wrong and you've tested this, comment down below, let me know. So for scenario B, is this needed? Are there gonna be some issues? Well. Potentially. Again, if you're not on a current gen console, this may be not right for you. But there are two reasons why it could be. One, if you are on a current gen console, or if you're not, if you need that audio extraction, that is definitely something that you won't get out of any other cheap camera card. Again, it's the same case for Sonoma A. But if you're a gamer who plays a lot of different things, especially if you're streaming live on like OBS, you could switch it really quickly and change what you're recording or change what you're playing. So you can really hop back and forth between your two devices and not don't have any too much issues regarding delay or your capture. So it's definitely, I recommend this if you're in scenario B and you are a streamer, you're a YouTuber who records gameplay or whatnot, and you play a lot of multiple systems versus having to deal with, oh, you know, I have to disconnect one system to reconnect another, that could be tedious where something like this can come in handy. Plus you can connect it to your DAC. And we all know how much sound is involved with games. Let's talk scenario C. This is the most disappointing scenario. Typically with a switch, or at least a switch like this, it's bi-directional, right? So you can actually have two devices go into here and it will go to one out. Or you could have one device go in and have it go to two different places. Now, when would you use this, in fact? Perfect example for me, if I have my Xbox Series X and I wanna go ahead and stream or capture gameplay, I need to have one HDMI go to my capture card and then from there it goes to my computer. But there's a scenario where I don't wanna capture, I don't wanna stream. Either I have to then unplug everything all over again because I don't have my capture card connected to a computer, which then gives it power for that bypass. That's where the problem lies, right? So instead, I could hit the switch and then go through a second HDMI cable into my monitor. So in fact, I'm actually using both of my monitors to inputs and I'm controlling one to the other. See where the switch works? So you would get one feed going to your capture device and the setup, or you can get another feed going just straight to your TV or your gaming monitor. That's perfect scenario when this would work, except this is unidirectional, meaning it is not able to run scenario C. Your two in and one out are clearly just two in and one out. You can't change that. There's no firmware, there's no nothing on the EDID switch that you can reconfigure it. So you cannot have one source going in and then pushing that source to two different outs. 
that doesn't exist here. And I think it's because of the audio extraction process that's happening and that technology, because of that, you can't run it that way, which is a shame, especially being an 8K device. It would have been perfect for my scenario and maybe others, but I get it. And so that's definitely one of the scenarios where this is not going to work. Now that's just three scenarios where this works or doesn't work. My question is, do you have another case scenario that you'd be curious of that you've tried it maybe in? Let me know in the comments if you tried another case scenario. I'd love to get an idea of what else to try. The BK21A by Ori is definitely one of the best switches I've ever used. And I've used a lot of Chaffa brands, which is off Amazon. This one by far has, ex has exceeded my expectations. Again, I do wish that more could be done. The fact that it's not bi-directional, which doesn't mean that they don't have units that are. I just know that with this specific unit, it's not. But for what you get, now typically this retails for about $70 to $80 on average. Um, sometimes you can find it on sale or, or directly from the website or you can find it on Amazon where you might find it on sale as well. Is it worth it? Again, if you are a new console or current gen console player in your wanting to have a more hassle-free way of switching between your devices, or if you're trying to switch between what you're recording for gameplay, this is a must. Do not buy anything less. Now, again, this is just one AK switch. I could tell you in my own research, searching, trying to find AK switches, I actually found this brand before they reached out to me. So. For them to actually reach out, I was really lucky because I was about to buy this before they sent it to me. Honestly, for the value of it, like I would say another thing I wish it had was USB power, especially if it's just five volt. If I could have plugged this in via USB-C, I could have just plugged this into the Xbox and then let the Xbox power this or the PS5 to power this and then that could run my, my system. So I wouldn't have to find another like power outlet. That would have been cool. Maybe a version two or version three. All right, listen, hey, USB power. I think you could do it. Now, I know this is not the most technical review out there. There are plenty of others who've done full deep dive techni technical like reviews of this product. I recommend you go watch them. I'll list a couple of them below here. But if you're a gamer, you're a streamer, you're a video content creator like myself who sometimes does game clips and you have a current gen console, this is gonna be a must have, 100%. I recommend it and I think it's gonna be a good value, especially if you have just one gaming monitor, maybe you don't have like a TV or monitor with multiple inputs and you're using it like me for two or one, one or two computers, you don't wanna to have to worry about unplugging cords all the time. Like as gamers, we're bad at our cord management as it is. Do you really want to add more cords and juggle that? No. So this is going to come into cleanse that palette just a little bit. As always, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel because it tells the algorithm that you like this content and it'll feed it into your actual subscription page because I think you'd like to watch it. Otherwise, I'm Joe. This has been Matsu Excel. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. As promised, I want to say just thank you to everybody who watched my last video. I am excited just how much that's blown up. And I just want to give a special shout out to everybody who commented on my last video. If you want to be shouted a lot like this, go ahead and leave a photo emoji or the camera emoji, and I'll definitely shout you on the next one. But props to Gavin, Blue Mouse, Robert DeLeon, Jimmy Ging, Kadar TV. Oh, I almost had this the whole way. We got Sebastian, Carrie. M to Street, I Stream, You Stream, Blue Sly Killer, Uncle Yap. All y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it.